Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Shatterhand. In the last part, we continued on through the game taking out two more stages in the process, and now it's time for the final of the core five stages. This is the Ravage City, which is probably my least favorite stage out of the core selectable five. For one reason through a lot of it, there's just damage everywhere, especially in these early sections when they have bombs raining down from the sky. Now, if you take your time, it's not too bad to avoid these. You just kind of have to keep an eye out where they are and just take things your take time, eh, take your time rather. But if you're trying to be reckless, like I tend to be in action games, eh, it doesn't work out too well for you. And there's going to be some other gimmicks later on that cause some issues with this stage. In fact, I can say for a fact, this is one of the few stages where I don't recommend getting the grenade bot. Purely due to one section later on, I recommend we get the laser bot, which I believe, if I recall correctly from the list, was Alpha... Alpha Beta? And somewhere around there? It's just so we can have something that targets downward. The flamethrower bot can also be useful for that. And while I think I think the flamethrower bot actually has higher damage than the laser bot, the laser bot is just more able to hit my target than when it comes to that section. You're also going to want to keep your eye out when it comes to whatever's above you, because sometimes there's going to be fire above you that will cause fireballs to rain from the ceiling, and while the robot can take those shots for you no problem, you're going to want to keep your robot around for later, so yeah. Yeah, the laser stream, despite what it looks like, is not that powerful. We also got these weird... Uh, the, way I, the thing I immediately... They, yeah, the thing they immediately remind me of is the Apache Joe stream. I think that was Mega Man 5? Uh, some good punches will take them down, but hitting them is the biggest challenge about them, honestly. They go everywhere really quickly. Now, I brought up last part that... Or was it the first part? One of the two. That in the Japanese version, you didn't uh, turn in, get a, an armor upgrade when you collected the same set of three panels twice. I mentioned that you uh, just get a giant gun... That's because in the Japanese version, you are a robot, and there's a good reason for this. Well, I can't exactly say it's a robot. Uh, essentially, this game in Japan was actually the adaptation of a children's tokusatsu TV show, something along the lines of Kamen Rider and Super Sentai, which was Power Rangers over here, obviously, known as Metal Heroes. We actually got, I think, a couple of those shows in, wrapped into two. Uh, a couple of them got adapted into... I think it was VR Masters. And the other ones were adapted into Big Bad Beetleborgs, which is actually a show I watched a good amount of as a kid, but looking back is kind of objectively awful. Uh, in particular, this one was raced, uh, raced, based off of Soul Brain, which was a series I think aired uh, the year this game came out, 91 in Japan into 92. And you just outright play as Soul Brain in that version, and the bosses are based off of enemies from that. I think they also have some minor graphical differences, like uh, the boss that charged across from the screen from side to side looked a bit different, as did the weird duo boss fight. I think also in the Japanese version, uh, the 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 two bo the, the the boss fight that had the random worm form, I think also just didn't have that in the Japanese version. Uh, there, some bosses were also shifted around in location, namely, uh, the area C and D bosses were swapped around. But beyond that, it's more or less the exact same game, minus some graphic stuff. Either way, that cannon right there is actually why I got the laser bot, because otherwise I have to dodge those missiles the entire elevator right up. And between the missiles I already have to dodge, the weird Apache Joe looking dudes, and the gears we have to dodge, there's already enough to dodge going on in this section, so if I can get rid of that really easily with the laser stream bot, or the flamethrower, I will do that. I also want to keep an eye on my robot because I want to get the armor for this stage's boss fight, but this elevator takes up at this point most of the rest of the stage, and so the platformer here gets a bit tight in timing, and as you can tell, I'm already kind of low on HP, so I need to be a bit careful. I think they intend you to just go up these platforms, jump down there, and run left, but you can just jump over this and walk over that, and you're fine. Kind of odd, but okay. Also, I completely forgot to mention it because I just saw it there. Uh, whenever an enemy makes direct contact with the robot, it actually does damage to the enemy. So that's also an uh, extra offensive option for them if you don't want the robot you have, though. 
Also, you want to head to the exact right on this platform, because as you can see, they try to pull a dick move by having you try to go for the box, but then have it start moving up on you so you can take some cheap damage. But if you know that that's there, you can just head right and just avoid it entirely. Causes the camera to get a bit weird, though. I have to walk back and forth to set that back. Yes, health, please, thank you. Oh, God. But now it's time for the boss of the Ravaged City, or whatever the name of the stage was again. This, I believe, is Infernon? This boss is active. If it's not swinging its sword and causing a shockwave, it's jumping all over the place and doing a bit of a Rakuha sort of thing from Mega Man, where it just slams the floor and causes flame to go on both sides of it. That attack's pretty hard to dodge, but since I had the robot armor, I could just stay in the middle of the hitbox and take it down pretty easily. The robot armor makes for a really nice offensive option like that. I really do like that they do that, and it keeps in mind a bit of a tactical option where you have to actively try to keep your robot alive, and I like that. And thankfully, they usually place enough letter panels that you can get the robot right, uh, the armor right before the boss fight. Also, final stage time. <laughs> stage of the game is Missile Command. They're trying to nuke us all, goddammit. And this is easily the longest stage in the game, as well as the hardest. However, I think it's better than the Ravage City in terms of its enemy and hazard placement, as well as better than the underwater level, uh, the anti-gravity, no, not the underwater level, the anti-gravity research center, just because they're a bit more fair about placements here, but don't get me wrong. They throw almost everything the game has had at us. Almost every enemy variety, almost every hazard type, a lot of platforming gimmicks, and a bit more beyond that. This stage is hard. In fact, I can easily see some people getting walled by this stage for a good while, especially because if you get a game over it, you're sent directly to the start of it. But, yeah. I should mention, though, because I don't die too often, there are checkpoints in the game stages. Uh, usually it's after whenever the screen fades to black and you're sent into another area of it, but sometimes since that doesn't happen, uh, it's just outright between, uh, certain made notable sections, like mini-bosses or something like that. Also, I'm only now noticing, I think you can tell when you have the upgraded punches by the color of your vest. When it's green, you're not upgraded when red it is, I believe? Otherwise, uh, for some reason the color palette just switched here and that makes us look like Marty McFly. The grenade bot is still my preferred one for this stage just due to the amount of enemies I can take out from a good range. So they have cases like this where you need to be really quick about where you're going. And uh, something I should note about the letter panels. Obviously I've started quite a few uh, stages with zero, but that's only because I used the armor during the boss fight. If you die or go to another stage without getting the armor, you keep whatever letter panels you have. So in the case I die right now, I'll be sent back to the start of the stage with that one beta panel. And that can make, in certain instances before a boss fight, grinding for the armor a bit more easy. But at the same time, you have to wonder if it's worth your time to do that, because who knows how long they'll be sent back, how long they'll take you back there, so on and so forth. Yeah, there is some things you have to keep in mind when it comes to doing that strategy. Thankfully, due to the amount of uh, enemies in this stage as well, it's very easy just to get some health extensions or health restorations if you need them. But yeah, the final stage is also a bit longer because we outright have to fight some bosses again. It's not an outright boss rush like Mega Man games have. It's closer to, I guess, I, to use another Mega Man comparison. Uh, it's closer to Mega, Man's, uh, Mega Man 1's Wily 2, where you only fight some of the bosses in a set order. We I think we fight three of them again. We fight Balzire, uh, Infernon... I, and I think Gravitus again? I think that's all of them. Because I don't think we fight the Pogo Borg, Cyber Gape, or Harpitude again. Which is a bit odd, because uh, I guess that's their way of thinking that maybe they were either the hardest bosses or the most interesting ones. It's kind of hard to tell what they intend with partial boss rushes like this a lot of the time. One thing I can recommend, though, 
is make sure that your robot takes as little damage as possible throughout this stage. As well, there's plentiful letter panels. I want to say there's at least 12 or so in this stage, if I'm recalling correctly. Of course, that could just be death speaking for me. But having it at low HP and potentially losing it is disastrous. This is the jump that really sucks, by the way. You. If you're not at the very edge of that fence, you're probably going to hit the ceiling there and just drop right down into the fire and take some damage. And that sucks, especially if you have the robot armor like I do right now, which I know is a bit odd to see me use early in a stage, but I want it for this boss fight, just so I can take it out pretty easily. Even without the armor, though, Infernon isn't too hard. He gets a bit more range effect. I think the bosses in general are toughened up a bit for this final stage, because I think their patterns are extended a bit. But overall... Uh, it's the same boss fight again. If you take it out once, you can take it out again. The prime strategy for that is probably to be really close to one of those bosses and just hit it with both the grenade and Shatterhand's fists, but I'm not sure if that damage stacks correctly, honestly. And now we're in the gravity section. Yay. They also like to throw every almost every gimmick a stage had you, except for, I think, water and ice. And they kind of throw it at you with no real warning. Like, right there, you might not be expecting to sit and get sent to the ceiling. Which is why I guess they throw just a single enemy at you with uh, both the safe ceiling and floor at you. So you can figure that out accidentally. But that's still a bit iffy for me. Maybe having one of the gravity platforms from earlier there would have been nice, but oh well. The game's... 27 years old this year, I think, so... Oh, well, no, 26. No, no, 27. So, not really worth complaining about game design stuff like that at this point. That section there is surprisingly hard to get out of without your robot getting absolutely destroyed by everything. Because between the flamethrowers on the gravity sections where, where your robot likes to stand and some of just the strange enemy placements, uh, your robot can take a lot of damage here really, really easily. Shatterhand himself, not so much. In fact, I dare say it's easier to keep track of Shatterhand's health than it is the robots, only because Shatterhand has a visible health bar. But you know where he's going to move when you move him, compared to the robot, which, while it moves in set places, when you're running around in the middle of action, can be kind of hard to keep track of. Gravitas, by the way, is basically the exact same fight. Nothing to really worry about. I would have sped these fights up, uh, like my usual Mega Man fashion, but I didn't feel like it. Plus, compared to Mega Man uh, boss rushes where they tend to throw longer bosses at you or just a lot at once, since it's only three of the bosses and they're dead pretty quickly, I didn't think it was that worth doing. Also, yeah, the bosses are still seizure rushes. Uh, that is a problem I think I brought up in the first part of the game. Basically, anytime a boss explodes or takes damage, the screen likes to flash, so you really need to be careful in the case you're epileptic with this game. We're actually in the last main section of stage right now. And this is potentially one of the more annoying ones because it's a vertical sequence with a lot of conveyor belts, but we also have a new damage source going on around here. And that's the rocket itself that we saw on the stage select screen. Uh, a few jets of fire are gonna come out of various parts of the engine. And you need to be careful with avoiding that, straight up. Plain and simple. And I accidentally screw up a bit here. Because I didn't mean to pick that up as an alpha. I meant for that to be a beta. Shit. Uh, because of that, what I actually have to do towards the end of this vertical section is right before I board the boss platform, uh, take a death so I can grab three betas again. If not, I uh, know I think I actually need to grab five betas because I want to get the armor for the final boss. And my reasoning for this is mostly because I'm more comfortable attacking the final boss and the, when the armor runs out with the grenade bot than anything else. Uh, if, you're if you have your own comfortable, uh, your own favorite robot, I recommend using that. But since I accidentally grabbed an alpha, I got the Rico bot. And while this isn't bad, it's actually really good for coverage against enemies. Uh, I lose my opportunity to get out the armor for the final boss. And uh, the, the thing is about the final boss in particular is that it's a checkpoint in its own right. So if I die in there, I don't have a chance to get a robot or the armor. And since I want that, I'm going to quickly die off screen. 
And thankfully, this game is also kind enough to put a health restoration point right before the final boss. Some games would not do that, and that's bullshit. I mean, it's a fair challenge, but come on, guys, just be nice. Also, yeah, I, I think I've mentioned the back and forth one, but you can actually actively punch the letter panels at any time just to switch to whatever you want. But, yeah, that's useful. And now it's time for the final boss against General Grover, who has a bit of a trick out of our own book here. He has his own armor, and this final boss is actually kind of ridiculous without the armor. If he's not firing a shitload of projectiles at you from point-blank range, he's jumping all over the place and doing a bit of a ground pound attack that causes whatever he, portions of the ground he hits to become floor hazards. Getting as much damage in with the invincible armor is the best way to take out this boss because while it won't kill him, I don't think I've ever killed him with it, I'll take his HP to such a manageable level that you don't have to worry about things. Okay, not gonna lie, whenever the music does that little da -na 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 portion, I think it's the DuckTales soundtrack for a second there. Either way, that's Shatterhand. Honestly, I think this is kind of an underappreciated game on the NES. Yeah, it's not perfect. I think some of the stages are a bit on and off with difficulty, and that kind of has to happen in a game where you have a stage select. Some games are gonna be... Some stages are gonna be meant to be harder because you're supposed to take them on in a certain order, but if you don't, that can be a bit painful. It's kind of the whole Mega Man 2 Quick Man thing with his uh, crusher lasers, whatever those are called. But overall, I'd say the game is fantastic. Well thought out gimmicks, great music, fun bosses, just overall very fun game to go through. Now, unfortunately, if you want to play this game, I think it was only ever on the NES. I don't think there was ever any future ports or virtual console releases from my memory. So you're just going to have to either track down an NES copy or emulate it, which... Uh, obviously, one of those is much easier than the other, but it all depends on the kind of person you are. I can give it my wholehearted recommendation, though. And as for what's up with me next, uh, I'm just still randomly going through my now revised LP list because I've actually added some games to that since the last time I mentioned it up. Uh, so I'll get more through that and we'll just see where we go from here on, really. There's no real plan with the way I play games, really. Which is just kind of the way I play games, really. But with that, we're actually going to get one last thing to control in the game. We're actually going to get to use our initials to put our high score on, even though I don't think this game had a save battery, so I don't think it'll save your high score. And I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, have a great night, take care, and I'll see you guys next Let's Play, whatever that may be. See you guys, then. <laughs>